ever wonder what the Westchester County Executive does during a typical day? You're about to find out as you join us on our Day with George Latimer. On January 25th, LMC-TV producer Dina Schumacher and I traveled the county with George, beginning with a breakfast presentation and ending with a sit-down interview. There were formal appearances, informal visits, meetings, a groundbreaking, and even a couple of meals. With his first year as county executive in the books, George reflected, planned, and looked forward, speaking in the car, in the halls, and in the office. Our day with George began at 8 a.m. and ended after 6.15 in the evening when we left him at his office. For this series, we rolled out video clips of our day at the approximate times they occurred on January 25th. And now we will show all of the clips together. Stick around at 7.30 for the local live where we will air our sit-down interview with the county executive. But first, one spoiler. Although he often seems to be everywhere, at least on January 25th, there was only one George Latimer. Now, let's hurry up and meet George and begin our day. It's an important morning to welcome again back to the Key Bank Speaker Series our county executive, George Latimer. We are partners in everything that we do and we are working together for, to, to create a great Westchester County and he's leading the way. Thank My you. pleasure to welcome our county executive, George Latimer. Thank you, Marcia. Uh, today you're going to be listening to a person who is a friend of mine and a friend of yours, but somebody who now has a position of authority in New York State, so much so that when they talked about the three men in the room, they actually had to break that glass ceiling and let a woman in. Yeah, but I think it is a statement, and you look around this room and you know many of the, your colleagues in this room, the organizations they represent, the major U.S. corporations, uh, the uh, financial institutions, the small businesses that are very successful. And in this room are the resources that uh, move this county separate and aside from what the county government does. I'm very pleased that uh, we're going to hear in a few minutes and she'll get the formal introduction from Marsha, my friend Andrea Stewart Cousins, because she has already shown in just a couple of weeks the ability to start to uh, make some changes uh, that are necessary over a long period of time. But we have difficult issues ahead. In Westchester we do, and we have in the state, and of course what we're watching in Washington. The only answers are this, that we work together, that we work across the lines of party, that we don't let our ego get in the way of the solutions that we need to have. I have to remind myself of that every day when I deal with my friends who are in the Board of Legislators, where we have disagreement, that we work through that. And we hope the same thing for Albany, and we all fervently hope for that in Washington, D.C. If we can get to that mindset, there isn't a problem that Americans can't overcome. Thank you, Marsha. Our travel, by the way, today is not really severe. We're going to do, uh, we're going to go back to the South Shore for something, do something in North White Plains, which is proximate to White Plains. Uh, but it's representative of what we do, and then most of the rest of the time in the office. Well, you've just completed year one as county executive, and I'm wondering, start with how the job has changed you. Well, I think what it does is it makes you realize that you have responsibility for many more people than just yourself. You know, I, I don't uh, sleep much. Anybody who follows me on Facebook, Twitter, you know, they see the posts all times in the morning and night. You know, somebody from Larchmont who was there when I first ran for county legislator in 1991, and I shook their hand. And they come up to me, if they do, and some couple have. They say, you're the same guy I remember. Just the way you were 27 years ago when I first met you that day on Addison Street. The not changing means that you still have the same values, you're still the same kind of person. That's the highest praise that, that I get. People have seen me over an extended period of time. They know my strengths, they know my weaknesses. There's no, there's no real surprises here. A lot of people don't know me in this county, that's the thing. That's this Peekskill and the Sleepy Hollow, places that I've just been introduced to. In, in many communities I won because I was the Democrat and they're a Democrat and they voted for me. But, um, hi sir, how you doing? George Latimer, County Executive. Uh, we're gonna be the host of the venue here for an indoor sports uh, football team. Oh really? Over New York streets, they're coming later this year. They have some different rules uh, indoor. But you know, I looked at this and I said, gee, you can punt and hit those things in the ceiling, but they said it was fine. So. 
You said sure, we signed a contract, six home dates. Well, Jim, you know how he is. Yes, yeah, so you know, I'm sorry to get back to you. No, I'm not. Mr. President, how are you? You're very busy, do not worry. It's all right. Please, let's go in. I'll tell May right now you're here. I'm in a rush. Uh, as this population is aging and living longer, dementia is going to be very much a part of all our lives. So, we mentioned a few things. Um, affordability, the aging population is growing in Westchester. Transportation needs I mentioned with the supervisor here. Um, things that the general stuff. Mr. Latimer, we said earlier before you came in that a large percentage of all of our seniors are, have insufficient incomes to meet their housing needs, their health needs, their transportation needs. And we're here to serve and we want to hear from you and we will be sharing with you what we have heard from our leaders this morning. Our County Executive George Latimer. I'm, I'm happy to be here to share a few thoughts but also to listen uh, to what comes out of the conversations that happen here. Uh, you have um, in your presence the first senior citizen county executive in a while. So last, last Thanksgiving Day I hit 65. I know that's the early front end of the club, but I'm in the club. And, uh, and that's helpful. And, and like most of you, I complain that my grandchildren don't call me enough on the phone. And <laughs> there's nothing I can do legislatively about that. And, and we can't assume that what we're doing today is perfect, that, it's, that nothing needs to change. We have to constantly be looking at changing and improving things. What David and the members of the Board of Legislators uh, have the opportunity to do, working with the administration, is to help us look at the Beeline bus system and determine are the routes that we have now the best possible routes? Is the way we provide mass transit the best possible way to do that? Uh, things are more dispersed today than they ever were geographically. So to work on the transportation needs for seniors is very much in our ballpark, something that I look forward to working with David and Damon and the rest of the legislature on it. We're gonna go knocking on the door of our friends in Albany and Washington. Man, if you got Andrea Stewart Cousins in the Senate, if you got uh, Nita Lowy in the Congress, we got some friends, but our friends can't make it right for us. We have to figure out how to make it right for us and then go to them and say, we have a workable program. We have a concrete thing that we're sure gonna help people and this is where we need the help. And that's, our, that's certainly my commitment because as they say, politicians only do stuff for themselves. Well, I'm a senior citizen, so if I'm doing stuff for myself, I have to be doing it for you too. Thanks very much. Thank you. Let me thank you for a minute. Okay. Thank you, David. Thank you, George. Sure. Um, when you went up there, you had no notes. You just spoke. How do you get prepared for that? And we can well, talk about that. You know, when I look at my schedule and I see what types of uh, groups I'm going to be speaking to today, go well, that way, um, you know, I, I sort of think about what's the message I want to have. So I have a chance to mull it over in my mind. I almost never have notes unless it's factual data that I want to reference. You know, so many dollars to do this and so many places. And even some of those things, I have it in my head already. It's the constant exposure to policy issues that you're, that you're always thinking about that leads you to the comfort level of not having to have a lot of uh, notes, advanced prep. What has surprised you about the job? It is a, uh, it's a bigger, more diverse county than you could know it's uh, in round numbers 35 miles from one end to the other. When you get 35 miles away from where you started out, you feel like you are in a different place. When you're in Peekskill, you feel like you're in a community in upstate New York. <clears throat> Very different feel than when you're in, uh, you know, uh, New Rochelle on the Bronx border, so to speak, or maybe not New Rochelle, but say Mount Vernon on the Bronx border. That feels different. Um, we're almost at, the, at your office, is that right? Yes, yeah, with the, uh, the office building, you'll see it in just a second as we cross Martine. This area, you know, if, if you grew up in Westchester as I did, this area was filled with tenements from Marinick Avenue right down here to the train station. And when Urban Renewal came in the 60s, all of these, the prior buildings were torn down and they were replaced by what you see here now. The courthouse is the tallest building there. Uh, that had some major renovations done in the late 90s when I was in the county legislature. Probably need some more again. You know how things are. You, you make a, a major renovation that 20 to 30 years later you need to do it again. You know, it's just the way it is. Now that I've lived long enough to see the cycles, I remember when Shea Stadium was built brand new in 1964 and then it became obsolete in my lifetime and was torn down. So that's the way things work. And, you know, unfortunately when people say, well, look, I don't want to pay any more taxes, well, I get that, I get that as an aspiration, but a building that you build 50 years later may not be viable any longer, and if you have to build a new one, you can't do it without having revenue. 
so you've got to balance it. You know, you can't be spendthrift and stupid in what you do, but you also can't let your assets atrophy. The legislative function and the executive function are two separate branches of government. I have responsibility for all of the county government with the exception of the legislative branch, the district attorney, the county clerk, and the board of elections. In one building, the eighth floor is the legislature, the ninth floor is the executive, so we are right next to each other and we have the opportunity to interact with each other on a much more regular basis. My mindset toward the, toward the legislature is much more cooperative and, and interactive. That's like unheard of, the executive and the legislature just talking that easily between each other. I just want to point out, these are my eight predecessors as county executive. In 1937, we adopted a county executive form of government. And there were no term limits? Are there term no term limits. limits. There are term limits now. Term limits came in in the Astorino years. So I'm limited by three terms. You know, I got into office at 63, so it's not likely I'm going to bump into the limits. This is, uh, <clears throat> I feel like I'm giving Jack Warren Kennedy tour of the White House now. <laughs> I, am, I am a working county executive. I have a variety of projects that I'm working on at any point in time. Airport, Playland, Money from Albany, New Rochelle Family Court, Taxi and Limousine Commission, Affordable Housing, Shared Services all the way down the line. These are things we've made some decisions on and now we have to make sure that they come to pass and so we keep them up there to monitor them. Minimum five years, this will happen sooner. And as I said, you know, I don't worry whether I'm going to be in office when these things come to pass. I only worry that we make the statements that we have, the decisions we have to make now so that it can come to pass. Agreement has been put in place between Amtrak and MTA to open up access to uh, Penn Station from the New Haven line. Right now the biggest problem we have is that the Long Island Railroad uh, which frankly doesn't operate as well as the Metro North Railroad does, doesn't want to give up platform space at Penn Station. And they know what's going to happen. The minute you give Westchester equal footing into Penn Station, people are going to pick Westchester. This is going to make property in Larchmont, Mamaroneck, Rye, New Rochelle more valuable. Now people it's up to them to do it. When will they be able to take the train from Mamaroneck to Penn Station? Understood. A couple of years is, is at the least. At, least, at least three years, I'd say, at this point. Now, let me just show you so what I'm doing here. So one of these things I have is, do I want to speak at this event, which is going to be in May in Yorktown? And so my answer is yes. I'll give that. Uh, these two are done. Thank you. I'm going to go down to communications, and then we'll go from there. Thank you. Okay. Pete Lauren, hop on board. are known for being everywhere. I mean, we in the large Mountain <laughs> Marina community have always wondered how many of you there are. Yeah, well. Um, as county executive, do you still feel you have that freedom and ability? Well, I'm limited by the laws of physics, <clears throat> which, uh, you know, do say that it's impossible for an object to be in two places at once. Um, but that an object in motion stays in right. motion. Well, that's true, and, that, and the law of inertia certainly applies. I would say that the physical distances in the county limit my de what I can do to satisfy my desire, and my desire is to be literally everywhere. And not everywhere to dominate everywhere, not everywhere to give a speech everywhere, but I'm interested, I want to see it for myself, and there is a value for people seeing you see it for yourself. And they say, yeah, you came here, wow, it's really good, I mean, you saw what we, what we saw. Fundamentally, I get up in the morning and I'm happy to be alive and, I'm, and I enjoy being with people to the greater extent and I think that shows, you know, and, you know, and, and I can turn into a conversation about the upcoming Super Bowl, we can talk about the Oscar movies, which movies did you see, which ones would you recommend, do you think they snubbed uh, uh, Bradley Cooper for director of uh, Star is Born? Yeah, and I could talk about all that stuff, and I love talking about that. It's not just about, well, uh, let me tell you what I'm doing here in county government, how I'm trying to change Westchester. You know, that stuff is like, you know, come on, come on, come on, all the politicians do that crap. And never without my friends. It's not a presentation, it's not a speech, it's hi, how are you doing, and, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, I'm going to leave some cookies over there to get when you get a chance, but I did want to just say a quick hello. And uh, Pete Lauren is with me. We have some brochures about uh, county programs. We'll leave them with you. 
Since it's getting warm now, you can fan yourself with it. And have a nice January. We'll see you in February for Valentine's Day. There you go. There you go. So why senior centers? Well, first of all, they meet during this time of the day. This particular center in North White Plains is a Wednesday-Friday program, and I know all the ones each day of the week. There's Wednesday Fridays at Garth Road in Eastchester here, Port Chester, New Rochelle, any day of the week you could walk in, Scotty Center and Yonkers. Uh, on a Thursday, don't go to the Scotty Center, it's closed. Very happy, thank you. <laughs> I'm 65, so I gotta figure 94, that's a long way from where I'm standing. Welcome to the center. <laughs> and there are days where I do multiple of those uh, if I don't have like a civic lunch. Now we're gonna go down to Larchmont okay. Rotary Club and then we'll right. go from there. At your inauguration, you took a measured, more bar bipartisan stance um, than many of the speakers at that event, if you yeah, recall. Yeah, I recall. And you had said that that, because we spoke about it then, right. that that was going to be your approach. Right. And I, from, I gather that's been your approach, but what I want to know is, how do you think that's been working? Do you think well, that I think people it's, sense a change? I don't know if they sense a change, but I, I think it's worked in that we've accomplished, you know, a number of things. Many of them we've accomplished with bipartisan support in the legislature. And my interaction with uh, uh, municipal officials who are Republicans have been, you know, fairly positive. So I go in not as the Democrat who's running the county government. I come in as the county executive that, that wants to interact with all the people. And to the greater extent, I've gotten, you know, warm responses. There are some disagreements and issues that, you know, divide the county from certain municipalities. But it's not been about politics. So you actually see a, a change in tone? I think so. And, and I think it comes from, you begin with the base of mutual respect. If I agree with you or disagree with you, I still respect you. I still think you have something to say that I need to listen to. And as long as you're willing to dialogue with me, I'm willing to dialogue with you. Uh, you saw me today at a business organization meeting. Um, you know, there's warm, warm feelings in the room. Um, and uh, so I think that's, that's reflective of the style. But once you get beyond that, when you deal with the vast middle, the 50 percent or 40 percent in the middle, I think most of those people see that the tone is not combative, it's not I'm right and you're evil, um, and that helps us in the process of trying to accomplish, uh, you know, what we can accomplish. So the realities are that there's a two-party system, we compete. If we compete with mutual respect, we can get through this. You saw in my primary campaign, Ken Jenkins and I competed. Let's be candid, a white fella and a black fella. The chances of that becoming ugly were certainly there. But Ken is a class act, and I think of myself as being a good guy. We went through nine debates, we went through a competitive race, and I won, but we kept our relationship intact, he endorsed me, I knew that he had talent, I asked him to be my number two. Now, Abraham Lincoln did that, and if it worked for Abraham Lincoln, it certainly could work for George Latimer. He goes, my friend, where's that? I go, it's in Westchester County. He says, oh, you live upstate. <laughs> and the look in his eyes was, we have milk cows at four o'clock in the morning. I'm thinking to myself, Mount Vernon is just like a section of the Bronx. It's just an extension. But the perception in, in Brooklyn, and I guess in the, in the five boroughs, let's be honest, if you live in New York City, New York City is the center of the universe. Are you our guest speaker for the day? They were asking about the program that we started at the, the high school and the uh, grade school. So the goal of the program is really to get the fifth graders <coughs> ready for transitioning to middle school. Right. So, so that's what we wanted to do was like just get them more comfortable. Just reading doesn't yeah. really matter what. I used to read comic books. Somehow I survived. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we're uh, convening the Climate Crisis Task Force. Okay. So uh, we have 11 different sectors. We have leads for each of those sectors. Each of those sectors are creating a team. You know, these are water, air, transportation. We have specialists within each sector. The ultimate climate action plan, do you have a target date for when you think that's going to be done? By the end of the year. Can I tell you one of the things that's really coming up? I think it's really going to mm -hmm. get you excited about it. We want to make the county center uh, a kind of a, a bit of a, a model. Right. You know, we want to have solar panels, you know, all the stuff that we want to do. Okay. Uh, we can make the county center, and that's going to be our kind of our pilot 
and our model for the rest of our facility in the county. Good update. Okay, breaking news. Is it good breaking <laughs> hey, news? It is good breaking news. The government will open up by this weekend. Great. Yeah. So this will be an amendment to the bill that they passed already, and they'd add this new chapter. If we're having early growing sites, um, and say we, you have to have the minimum of seven, where in the county they're going to be, how is that decided? Next year's going to be a presidential race. Can you just imagine what a mess that's going to be? If we don't have more locations. What's the sequence of events that follow now? We were able to rebid. Is it a, is it a one month bidding process? Next week we have the meeting with Con Edison. Let's take on three or four of these lesser issues. We're here once again to, to remember Chris Ridley, January 25th in 2008, and the tragic events from that evening. But while we're waiting for the exact moment to make sure that we have our recognition exactly at 4.43. Deacon Simmons is going to come up and open us up with a prayer for this evening. Let's look to the Lord for prayer. We thank you that we're able to come together as a community to celebrate the life of Christopher Ridley. We thank you for his heroic deeds, for he moved with compassion as the last act of his life. That what happened here happened to a human being, a brother of ours, a person that was loved and loved people, and that we will never forget this man nor his sacrifice in this physical place for the rest of time. Mistakenly, he was shot and killed that day, 11 years ago. So again, we're here to stand with the family as they mourn this day, and they will mourn it for the rest of their lives. We, but we're also here today to start a living memorial to his life and to his legacy.